Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Trust we are doing good. Welcome to another webinar that we've got for you, which is um, based on just asking me questions about the financial market. So I can see a lot of people on here that have been joining my, um, my sessions consistently. I want to say a very, very big thank you, okay? Thank you very, very much for joining my sessions consistently. It's been, it's been, it's been wonderful with you guys. Thank you very much. And also, yeah, before we begin, I just want to um, explain a few things about uh, risk management or management of risk to you guys before we start asking questions, okay? So let's not make it boring. Let's just dive into uh, the whole thing that we'll be doing, which is let's start with risk management. So first off, um, ask me anything, an EMA session, is just an interactive Q&A webinar that we'll be talking about trading and earning more from the financial markets, okay? With that said, um, if you have a trading account with us, I'll be dropping a poll. And if you don't have a trading account with us also, I'll be dropping a poll, okay? So I just need you to respond to the poll when I drop it before we move ahead. So I'm publishing the poll already. Are you a live client with EGM? Or are you a current client with EGM? Yes or no? So let's do all well to respond to the polls, okay? Let's do all well to respond to the polls. And also let's do all well to share the link to the webinar. Let's share it around. Let's share it to friends and more people so we can get enough persons on the webinar, okay? So are you a live client with EGM? Yes or no? Please do respond to it. Yes or no? Are you a live client with EGM? Yes or no? Okay? The polls is live and running, okay? The pose is live and running, so we can start from there. And a lot of people might not want to attest to being clients of EGM. So um, if you are not a client of EGM, it's very easy to become a client of EGM. So let me stop sharing my screen and let me share just a new screen, okay, a new screen. Let me share a new screen and I'll walk you through on the processes of becoming a client with so EGM, okay? So, um, that and there we go now to become a client of egm is very very simple all you need to do is go to all you need to do is go to uh eagle global markets.com okay eagle global markets.com and i'll drop the link to eagle global markets.com the website in the in the chat box I drop the link in the chat box, and there you go. You go to markets.com. Now, first off, all you need to do is you log in and or you sign up. You sign into the web page, and you see all these things. You, you, you see it um, like. You drop it. Um, you go to the website, and you see this right here. So all the web page or the major front page of the web you see it there and you see the our social media handles and the support line up above left and on the right hand side you can see login one click demo open live open demo then down below you see home about range of markets platforms egm analytics education partnership contact if you want to become a partner with us you can become a partner with us by clicking on partnership and reading through the details, then signing up. Very, very easy. Okay. So for you to create an account with us, very, very simple. All you need to do is click on open live. And okay, let me log out. And it takes you to this page. Then you see don't have an account. You click on don't have an account and you create your account. You fill in all these details appropriately. Please don't make mistakes unless you'd have to refill the form again. You fill off with your start, first name, last name, username that you'd like to use on our platform. Then emails, choose a password that you'd like. Then your phone number where we can reach out to you if there is any issue with your account or we need you to do or we need to do an upgrade on your account and we need to inform you before we do that upgrade in your account. Okay. Then you fill in your personal details, your date of birth, the country, your address, and then you press next. So it takes you to another um, form where you fill and you get started with um with everything okay so back to 
what we have today, which is the AMA session. Yeah, questions can start coming in. Please, I'd love your question to come in from the question section, okay? I'd love your questions to come in from the question section, okay? So if you don't post any questions in the chat box, just drop the questions in the question section, okay? Don't drop questions in the chat box, drop questions in the question section, okay? So I can actually see the questions, not when others have dropped the message or something, it goes up and I can't find the question anymore, okay? So before we start diving into questions, we are already in the AMA session right now, and let's talk about risk management. Um, you see, what most people don't understand about risk management is very, very simple. People think for them to make a lot of money from the financial markets, they need to risk a lot in the financial market. Well, that is very, very wrong, okay? That is very, very wrong. For you to make a lot of money from the financial markets, you don't need to risk a lot, you just need to risk minimum, okay? You need to have a calculated risk. Calculated risk, calculated risk. Risking small doesn't mean you won't grow your trading accounts, doesn't mean things won't work out for you in the financial markets, okay? Also, risking much doesn't mean things work out for you in the financial market. So it's best to risk small and be profitable or lose it because of you still have enough to risk that puts you right on track. Okay? Yeah. So that is it when it comes to um, risk management. Okay? So back to back to the questions that we have. Now, Moses Afolabi asked, he said, this is his question slash request. He said, why is GBP sometimes difficult to predict? Um, I'll be candid with you, Moses. The financial markets, nothing is ever difficult to predict, okay? Nothing is ever difficult to predict. It's only when you can't see something that aligns with your trading approach, okay, on the chart. That is when a chart is clear or difficult to predict, Okay. If you are trading breakouts or impulse and correction, and you don't see an impulse and correction on GBP, on GBP pairs, do you, will you trade it? No, that's the thing. When you see, when you can't find your trading setup or your trading style on the currency pair, you ignore it. That's why I trade USDs the most. I trade with USDs the most, and um, a bit of indices and gold. Okay, that's why I trade the most because I know my trading approach or my trading step appears on this pair the more, so I just stick to them. And also, you don't trade every single pair in the market. You have a few you risk enough on that are very, very, um, would I say sure, that is very, very sure for you that you would make money off them. And secondly, he says you want a webinar or a seminar on emotional management. Okay, when we'll be, doing, when we'll be talking about emotional management and risk management, Will be very very soon i assure you very very soon very very soon that we need to cover a lot of things but so we still need to cover the aspect of technical analysis and some other other terminologies but we will talk about emotional management and risk management soon okay now um there's a lot of questions coming in in um in, in, in the question section so please drop your questions in the question section okay um so kelechi asked he read a book called high probability for X trading. And he talked about the DFT, dual time frame strategy, which advises to view the direction of price on higher time frame and lower time frame to the direction of higher time frames, okay? Now, very, very simple. Kelechi, if you remember, we had a webinar the other time and we talked about, um, we talked about um, multiple time frame analysis, which is the same as dual time frame analysis. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, let me share my screen so you see what I'm talking about. Share my screen, share screen. So, um, Keishi, I best believe you can see my screen, right? I best believe you can see my screen, right? Now, how am I able to determine this on the chart? It's because of I understood where price was on the bigger picture okay you need to understand where price is at the bigger picture of price before you want to determine the smaller picture of price now looking left like i told you guys you always look left to understand what will happen on the right looking left i see 
EUUSD has been moving to the upside. This is a level one rise, a level two rise, a level three rise. What do I expect? I expect two things a reset or a reversal. And this is looking like a reversal to me because last structure is broken. So knowing that last structure is broken on the daily time frame, I, all I need to do is go to the four hour time frame. And if you guys remember the last time I said I bought ERUSD somewhere around here before we got another entry on the last webinar around here, but it hit my stop loss. No, it didn't hit my stop loss. Yes, because I remember there was no structure on the 15 minutes time frame. So we placed our stop loss here. And ERUSD is still currently a profit. It was NZUSD that hit the stop loss. So this was the last area of structure right here. And it has already broken. What will I be expecting? I'll expect a correction to sell further. So Kelechi, do you see how it's easy to combine all time frames together to understand where price will be going? Then look at this impulse correction, impulse correction. What will I be expecting? Are you expecting an impulse to the downside? Very, very simple to apply. And my thoughts on multi time frame analysis is yes, always implement it. It gives you a better insight into price, it gives you a better, uh, a better uh, way you should undo or determine where price will be heading to. Okay. So that's it on Kelechi. Um, Kelechi also asked, how can I practically implement the risk to reward ratio in trading? First, you need to know how much you are willing to risk and you need to know how much you want as reward, okay? If you are willing to risk one, you should be, you should be willing to get two or three. Very simple. You should be willing to get two or three, okay? Now, if I'm willing to risk 1% of my trading account on ERUSD, I'm willing to let find a trading setup that will give me back two or three on EURUSD. Okay, so how to practically implement it is to be precise about your entries, lesser stop loss while that take profits, and that's how you implement a good risk to reward ratio. Um, so Soya asked, how can you best treat volatile pairs like Wall Street 30? You trade all pairs the same way, but remember that all pairs have different characteristics. Okay, let me show you something on the chart. Now, US 30, NASDAQ, US 2000, DAX, all of them are under the categories of volatile pairs or indices, okay? Now, um, I'm actually in a trade on US 2000. So US 2000. I bought US 2000 here, and it's currently still in profit. I bought here, and I'm in profit. Now, look at what you see on US 2000. Equal highs, equal highs, phantom trend line, other blocks and all. Look at the same thing on EIUSD. There's no difference. The same way you, up, you, you analyze all pairs, that's the same way you analyze all pairs, and that's the same way you trade them. They might just have different characteristics. All you need to put into consideration is the different characteristics that they have. Okay? So that is how to best trade pairs, not even... The, the US, the, the, the Wall Street 30, or the Dow, or NASDAQ, that's the best way to trade pairs, okay? So I'll be sharing my screen back to the AMA session. And yeah, so still going through the questions. Um, Samuel says, I'm currently signed up with the proprietary trading system, uh, but would want to trade on my own as well. What are the options there? What systems would you recommend? There are a lot of trading approach or systems you can use we have price action technical analysis we have the institutional trading approach we have btmm we have beat the market maker but the best and the most common or the most common i've seen is price action technical analysis that way you you actually uh you, you approach price in just looking at the naked charts okay just looking at the naked charts you approach price and you determine where they might be heading to. You approach price with certain confluences, okay? You approach price with certain confluences, and that's the best I would recommend. Price action slash technical analysis, okay? Somehow that's the best advice you could get from me on that. Now, Kelechi asked, what currency pair has the highest profitability? Every currency pair has the highest profitability. Just determines on how you trade them and when you trade them, okay? How you trade them and when you trade them. Um, Silas asked how to put stop loss and take profit on the trade. It's very, very simple. Silas, please respond. What platform are you using to trade? 
We're using the MT4 or the cloud tree. The MT4 or the cloud tree. First, let's start from there. Please drop your response in the chat box, okay? So I can proceed. Now, Kelechi also asked, what's my advice on naked tree? Um, if you look at my chat previously, if I had to take them away, um, um, you would see that I treat just the naked charts, which is like price action, but more of an advanced way of trading price action, not much trend lines or phantom trend lines, as I call it, just simple and easy to understand. So my advice on naked forex trading is it's okay. Trading with indicators is okay. You just need to stick to what works for you. It's all based on preference. That's just my own preference. Other people might like trading with indicators. There was one time also I liked trading with indicators, but remember, it's the financial markets. You need to evolve with price, you need to evolve with the way things are. And I evolved with my trading approach, and that's how it's done. Okay? So, Theophilus asked, What is drawdown period in trading? Drawdown period in trading is very simple. Let me use a simple life scenario to explain. You were supposed to get to work by 8.30. Or you got to work by nine o'clock that's a drawdown you did not get to work on time okay you didn't get to work on time so let's bring it to trading you were supposed to enter a trade at um 8 30 but you entered at nine o'clock then you are in a loss that means you are in a drawdown okay because if you had entered on 8 30 you might have been in profits and now you entered at nine o'clock price is already moving against you that's what drawdown is. So in a more structured format, drawdown in trading is when you enter a trade and it stays in loss for a period of time before going in anticipated direction, okay? Drawdown is when you enter a trade and it stays in loss for a period of time without going before going in your anticipated direction. So let's take, for instance, you missed your entry on a pair. Then you decided to just jump on the pair, like enter the pair aggressively. Okay? You entered aggressively. And in the end, it stays in loss for two hours, three hours before entering profits. The period which it stayed in loss is termed as a drawdown period. So, Theophilus, do you understand that? Are we clear on that? Um, also, Kelichi, have I been giving the right response to your questions? Samuel, did you understand um, what I explained to you? Sima Sawyer, do you understand what I explained to you? So I'd love to get responses before I proceed. Okay. I think I, I told Silas to drop something in the in the chat box. Okay. Okay, okay, great. Um, Christian, send your questions to the question section, not the chat box. Okay. Send your questions to the question section, not the chat box, because a lot of chats will come in and in the end it goes up, up, up. I, I need to start finding them. Okay. So before I proceed to features question, let me answer some of uh, Christian's section question, okay? So Silas said he uses MT4. Silas, uh, let me explain something to you on the chat. Let me explain something to you on the chat. I've explained these things over and over and over on webinars. I would explain it again to you and I'll send you a video or a link to one of our YouTube videos that would explain this thing to you better okay i'll send you a link to our video that would explain these things i think i have an analysis somewhere here okay so let's do this summer i mean silas look at this closely um let's say you sold um how do i explain this to you okay let's say price went to the upside and you drew a trend line to the downside and you wanted to sell nzd cat at a correction okay you wanted to sell anytime nzd cat does this look at this this is a downtrend but you want to sell every time it does you want to sell at the top here you, know, you always want to sell at the top here your stop loss, if you are looking to sell at the top here yeah, or here, yeah, just at the top of it of a downtrend, the high in the downtrend, your stop loss needs to be at a previous, okay? Previous, previous high in that downtrend. Now, if you want to 
buy in an uptrend okay your stop loss needs to be at the previous low if you bought here your stop loss needs to be at the previous low okay so that's how you set stop loss now if you want to set your take profit your take profit is based on your grid i tell people um, you don't need to say you want to cut 100 pips or 200 pips. Let your take profit be based on your grid. That way, you know if you've had enough from that market or you still want to stay in that market to make enough. Okay? So your, your stop loss should be defined as what? Previous high or previous low. While your take profit should be based on your grid. Okay? But also still have a target so your grid doesn't put you in trouble. Okay? So that's it. Um, let me answer Christian's question, but please, next questions or all questions should go to the question section, okay? All questions should go to the question section. Thank you. Now, um, Christian asked, and uh, he said, what determines a stop loss placement? Christian, I just explained that also. Um, I just explained it based on, if I did doubt trade. Your stop loss should be at previous high. If you're at an uptrend, your stop loss should be at previous low. So it gives you a space for price to breathe and also gives you a better risk to reward ratio. Okay. Morning, if and I am morning, morning. I was expecting you on the class already. So um is it your risk tolerance or should it be based on my technical analysis of the chart? So um Christian, there are two ways your stop loss placement should be. It should be based on your risk tolerance, number one. Then based on your technical analysis but what tells you where to place your stop loss your technical analysis tells you where to place your stop loss first then secondly your risk now helps you in two ways either to refine your stop loss placement or to increase your stop loss placement to accommodate the risk you are willing to take so if my technical analysis tells me my stop loss is 10 pips but to myself i know that i always use a 20 pips stop loss okay what I will do is to just refine my stop loss on a lower time frame. I can now go to the five minutes time frame and refine my stop loss to be like 12 or 15 pips. That way, I did not exceed the limit I want to use at my stop loss. And also, it also aligns to the limit. My or it also aligns a little bit greater than the limit of what my 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 my, my uh of what my technical analysis on the chart is telling me. Okay, so I hope you understand that. Um, so feature asked. What is your deposit slash withdrawal rate and withdrawal slash deposit duration? We okay, so let me start from your last question. We have a physical office in Lagos, but at the moment we are not taking in clients to the office due to coronavirus. Okay, so first off, we have a physical office, we always use it for seminars and education, but since coronavirus started, we are not expecting or we're not taking in clients to the office. So as to reduce, uh, so as to create social distancing and also reduce the, the, the rate at which the virus spreads. Okay. Now, our deposit rate is 450. Our withdrawal rate is 450 in dollars. Okay. Dollar to Naira is 450. Deposit and withdrawal rate. Our withdrawal slash deposit duration. Your deposit duration is instantly. Our withdrawal duration is if you withdraw on time as early as 7 a.m. in the morning, you get your, your, your withdrawal in your bank account before noon okay so it doesn't take much time at all just let's just put that 24 hours yes and also our withdrawals are actually instant but depends on your bank provider or your service provider okay so um most she said is question slash request is to create also a seminar on reversal trading okay um yes reversal trading is um uh, one thing i I actually find amazing about the markets and how I find reversals in the market is one thing that amazes me because I use something called the commitment of traders data that helps me find where the trend will be changing and helps me anticipate them beforehand. Okay. Now, Kilechi said, what combinations of indicators has given me the highest ratio of profits from experience? It's still my SMA, EMA, my simple moving average and exponential moving average combination. I use, let me confirm, I don't really know the values on my head, but let me confirm uh, what my SMA or what my moving average. So I use the simple moving average of 8 and exponential moving average of 18 on my chart. That way it helps me time my entries better. Also, it lets me know when the correction is over, but it's an approach I use to, 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 to them, okay? Silas, I've answered your question before on stop loss and take profit. Thank you. 
Kelechi also asked, before you take a trade, what are the key signs? Well, before I take a trade, there are a lot of things I look out for. I look out for the, the structured price first. Then secondly, I look at what has price done. The price create a liquidity void or a liquidity gap. Is there an order block? Is that a total soup buy model? There's a lot of things I look out for based on the way I trade. But let's just call all those things I look out for confluences, okay? I call it confluences. And yeah, you should look out for confluences. Two to three is enough, but I look out for more because I, I, I don't trade every day, but when I trade, I try as much as well just to make the max out of the financial markets, okay? And I just look for confluences when I trade. So Silas, how to set your MT4 is very simple on your, how to set your stop loss on your MT4 is very simple. But please confirm to me, are you using MT4 for mobile or MT4 for PC, okay? MT4 for mobile or MT4 for PC? On what time frame, Chooks, I, I really can't understand your question. Okay, on what time frame do I look for my confluences? I, I start my analysis majorly, like majorly from the monthly down to the one hour. But I refine them on the daily mostly, okay? On the daily mostly, I refine them on the daily. Because the daily I get to see areas in which I could swing price properly and all hold my trade for a long period of time. Okay, so Chicks, I hope that question is cleared. Okay, so I'm going down to um, to Kenneth. Kenneth says, as a newbie, since your hands are not strong, let's say I invest. Two hundred dollar for a professional trader to be to trade for me. I this I can't tell you how much you get in return. I can't tell you because we don't do that at Eagle Global Market. But we have a copy trading platform, okay? Eagle Global Market copy trading platform where you can actually get people to trade for you, okay? It's a platform where we give you access to thousands and thousands of trader, profitable trader, consistently profitable trader. Um, that. They place trades and you earn from them placing trades. So it's just like the, 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 the email we sent you, monkey, they walk, babu, they chop. So the monkey are the guys that will be trading for you and you'll be the one earning the profits, okay? So if you need more details about that, I will send you a link. Let me type in the link to, to you to sign up for our Eagle trading platform. Sorry, to our copy trading platform where you actually can... Um, can start making money without trading, okay? I've replied to your, your question, okay? I've replied to your question with the link. So you check your question, you'll find the link there. Now, Samuel says, it's understood. What combination of indicators and candle formation would you recommend? Based on recommendation, I only use the engulfing and inside bar candlestick, okay? Engulfing candlestick and inside bar, that's what I use mostly. And my indicators are simple, two types of indicator, the simple moving average and the exponential moving average, with a simple moving average of eight and the exponential moving average of 18. That is what I use. So Taiwo said, I'll, I should explain how I use an order block to achieve sniper entries. Okay, wow. Um, let's go to the charts, let me just show you that. It might not be details as you're expecting, but just try as much as possible to cap the concept, okay? So, um, sniper entries is not something you start getting every day or, or, or every now and then, but you need to understand the concept of an order block first. So what is an order block? We have two types of order block, a bearish order block and a bullish order block. What is a bearish order block? Very, very simple. If price is moving in an uptrend, Price will always correct before moving. Impossible. Now, every correction it does consists of bearish candle, like bearish candles, right? Every correction it does right here consists of bearish candle. Now, the last bearish candle before the major engulfing or bullish candle before going to the upside is a bullish order block. While in a downtrend, the last bullish candle before going to the downside is a bearish order block. Now, let's see 
how other blogs react on price on the chart. Now remember I said this is an uptrend. Like looking at this closely, this is an uptrend. Okay, like this is an uptrend generally. Okay, that is an uptrend, and I want to buy, but I have missed out on. I have missed out on this buy. I've missed out on this one also. But I want. I need to get an entry to the next impulse. All I need to do is just what look at the charts this was one bearish candle before a major impulse i'll mark it out this is another bearish candle before a major impulse i'll mark it out what do i need to do these are the two ones i see before major impulses so what do i need to do i need to just wait for price to come back to it and look at what happened when price came back to it, what happened? We imposed the way from it. So see how precise it was. See how precise it was. And if we were in a downtrend, I'll just invert my chart. And okay, I can use that. Okay, I can use an inverted chart. So this is a downtrend, for instance. And this was the last. Let's just take this candle as bullish, okay? Because I just inverted my chart. And look at what happened. Price came back to trade into it before dumping to the downside, clearing this what? Clearing this equal lows that we had, liquidity was grabbed. Then immediately what happens? We reverse the upside. Very, very, very simple, okay? Also, um, if I'm to use a normal downward trend chart without, sorry, um, we're using, you are NZD card, okay, we're using NZD card. Um, okay, so using NZD card, that we're using before this is a downtrend where is the last bullish major bullish candle before the major bearish candle so this is it right here what would i be looking for my entry this and see if you go to the daily time frame this was like a precise entry on the chart right there you'd be getting tagged in at the open of a new day candle right here so you see how sweet this is like deep down just went all the way down liquidity grabbed here but i've taken first profit here then possibly last profit here if there was something reasonable to yes, there's something reasonable right here to grab profit also without taking profit right there. And that is just the concept of other blocks. Now you'll be wondering, how do you know which other blocks work? I will let you figure that out yourself. Okay. Not all other blocks work, but you need to understand which other block will work. Now, the other blocks that will work is just like support and resistance. Okay. For a support to hold, it needs to be a support on a higher time frame. For a resistance to it needs to be a resistance on a higher time frame. Okay. And that is how you understand which supports to use or which other block works. Okay. So who we'll asked that question again? Um okay, Tuli I, I I believe you've got the answer you wanted, right? I use um them on the the the, the one hour and the four hour majorly, the one hour and the four hour majorly, but it's always on my chart. I just need to always I ignore them whenever I'm on the daily or the weekly or the monthly charts. Then I just start considering them when I'm on the four hour and the one hour. Okay, Tulu, thanks. You understand now that's great. Um, Kenneth asked, How many months will it take to take a newbie to learn on the Eagle Global Market platform? It takes you a week to, to just learn, like to learn the basics and be able to start trading it takes you a week a week if you're dedicated and determined that you want to learn it takes you a week and how fast you are able to grab okay well from my own perspective and clients i've been training it takes them a week because i do want to make it detailed seamless and all straight through to the points and that's just what it, it, it takes if you missed any webinar please go to our youtube channel it's always there it's uploaded right immediately after our webinar. If you missed any webinar, the, the replays are always on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Okay, if you want to pick a trader, who to follow on the, the Cloud Trade platform, I'm sorry, our Copy Trade platform, it's very simple. You need to understand the type, first thing, you need to understand the type of strategy the person trades. 
Okay, you need to understand the type of strategy the person trades. See if if you were trading that same strategy, would you be comfortable with it? When you understand that, then you go and see the person uh, equity curve. That means it's profit curve, it's ROI return. See how well it is. Don't look at the months. Don't look at its all time. You know, look at six months because if you're thinking of coping traders you should be able to give them a span of six months to let them do what they want to do on their account and see how much you realize so go and look at their last six months trading record see what it was like then after that copy the trader those are the two simple um ways you should determine how to pick traders you'll be copying two simple ways okay two simple ways you determine who you'll be copying so silas um you use an MT4 for mobile, okay? Very simple. This is what you need to do. Go to your MT4. Okay? You go to your MT4 on your mobile. When you go to your MT4 on your mobile, you click on your trade. The button down below, you click on your trade. When you click on your trade, if you have a running trade, you drag it to the side, and you will see a button that has a pen or you see an icon with a pen and you click on it when you click on it you are able to adjust your trades now how do you adjust your trade very simple you see the stop loss on the left hand side a line that is color red and a line that is color green the red one is for your stop loss your secondary the green one is for your take profit so the value you determine from how i teach you on finding stop loss and take profit on the chart you input it there and you just uh you just follow it along, okay? Someone said I should show the last trade I took. My, my account is logged in on my mobile. But let me see if I can uh, actually. Um, okay, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. How can I show you my... Okay, I have current running trade on my cloud trade, okay? Let me just show you from my cloud trade. Let me log in that and I will show you. I'll show you the trades I have running. Okay. Um, so I shouldn't be showing you trades I took though, but just for clarity, because it's an, uh, it's 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 a it's a um, what's it called? It's an ask me anything session. Okay. So I'm coming launch. Okay, so I'll just show you my running trade, then I'll explain how I took this trade. Okay, um, share screen my cloud trade. Um, there's no way I can cover my balance here, so everybody will be seeing my balance. Okay, now this is my running trade on the, the cloud trade platform. Okay, I really don't like to risk much when I'm trading indices, but the reason I risked less on ERSD was because of it has already moved before. I joined in the trade, okay? That was why. So ERUSD and US 2000, how did I take the trade, right? Okay, so you've seen the running trades, right? The two running trades. So let me stop sharing the screen. Let me show you why and how I took the trades. Very, very simple. Um, it's nothing difficult at all, so you see how I took the trades. So first off, I understand that US 2000 is us 2000 slash usd okay i understand that us 2000 is sorry a minute um i understand that us 2000 is is um uh, well i just turned in the meeting okay so i understand that us 2000 is the cap versus or against usd then i understand ERUSD usd is the euro against the usd so what do i need to do first before i trade usd pairs i let me change my watch list i have the general watch list i use i check out dxy okay the dollar index okay now on the dollar index we are in an uptrend very sweet uptrend but the dollar was moving too fast and it was creating or it was trading inefficiently okay so i needed to see the dollar trade efficiently 
then I spotted this fair value gap on the daily time frame. Now, fair value gaps is when price trades inefficiently, it leaves areas for price to come and fill. So I understood that we need to fill this fair value gap right here. We need to fill this fair value gap right here. So I expected the dollar to be weak. And also I found an SMT divergence, which was not in alignment with the EURUSD and the US 2000, okay? So this was more reason I was expecting the dollar to fall. And currently you can see if I check on the forward time frame, the dollar is falling, okay? It's already falling as I anticipated. I need to fill the fair value gap. So when I realized this, all I did was come to the USD, ER USD, and on the daily time frame, okay, I saw an order block on the daily time frame. Let me just reset this. I saw an order block on the daily time right here. So an order block right here because it was indecisive, but very much an order block. So I have two trading accounts, one on the MT4, one on the cloud trade. So I got my entry at first on my MT4. I didn't even think of my cloud trade platform. I got the first entry right here. I made 40 pips off it. I closed on this first candle, which was 40 pips movement. Like I got 40 pips movement from this first candle. But the reason I'm holding the trade, or I realized I had to enter on the MT4 on the cloud trade was when we had the webinar and I, I promised everybody I would take a trade on the webinar. So doing my analysis, I saw this impulse and this correction. This fair value gap had been filled, and this was a, what a previous order block on the four hour time frame right here. Because this week broke this previous week. This was a previous order block right here. So I got another entry on ERUSD right here on the webinar. Yes. And then I'm holding all of this move right here. So I expected to get to 1.2161 1, 1 before I sell my position and I take a sell position or I expect it to get to 1.20484 before I sell. That's why I take profits or close my position on ERUSD, okay? Um, also, the US 2000, that was the same approach I took. So let me show you the US 2000. Um, not the green list, the red list. I use the red list mostly for cryptos. Um, the US 2000 was simple, very, very simple. There was no SMT divergence on the US 2000, but there was a daily order block right here. So there was a daily order block. And what was I expecting? We had a daily order block. We had a liquidity void or a, 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 a buy side liquidity up here, then a trend line phantom, okay? So what I expected was a break of this trend line Okay, a break of this trend line, then we, we, we correct back into the trend line, then we buy price higher to grab liquidity here and grab liquidity here. Although I wanted to enter um, US 2000 on the 8th of March, right here, but I really can't remember, I forgot I had an analysis. I forgot I had an analysis, it came back to equilibrium. Then I totally forgot I had an analysis on US 2000. Okay. That was why I never took the, 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 the sell on US 2000. That was why I never took the sell on US 2000. But still, I'm still in profit and I'm riding the profits. And that was how I, 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 I found the trades. And the reason I entered, I explained, there's even an order block right here on the four hour. If you check on the one hour, this is the order block. Price tested the order block. Then immediately at the next candle, I entered. I went into small drawdown, like $1 drawdown. That's like um, 370 drawdown or 450 drawdown, 450 naira drawdown before I now impulse to the upside and currently in profits. So that was how I found my trades. And Chooks, I believe your question has been answered. Okay. So, um, Adekule says, please, sir, I'm not clear with the terms buy limit and sell limit as well as buy stop and sell stop application. So let me explain that to you. Okay. Um, I need the whiteboard to explain that. So, um, I'll go um, gold. Oh, this gold. Oh, that gold. Expect it to get to this four hour order block. 
press the card um, okay all the blocks now i'm looking for okay yeah um let's use this i have nothing on this so let me show you the the concept of buy buy limit and sell limit when we talk about limit orders okay limit orders it's very very simple you are expecting price to reverse okay price to reverse now we were in a downtrend and you've missed out on the downtrend but you see that there is an order block or there is resistance at this area right here and you're expecting price to come back at the resistance but you'll be busy at work you can't actually monitor the charts because you'll be busy at work this is where the concept of limit orders or limit orders comes in yes that's this is for for sell limits now okay what the sell limit order does is price has to come back to trade into that resistance or support trade a little bit above it then drop now if you place the limit order right here, a sell limit order it will tag you in and immediately you'll be in profit once price drops now for a buy limit order very very simple price is in an uptrend okay but it's an order block here and you missed out on this uptrend you anticipate price to come back to the uptrend to the to the resistance or order block sorry to the support or order block then you place the buy limit here price comes into it tags you in immediately you run into profit that's the concept of what um that's the concept of limit orders sell sell limit and buy limits now let's talk about stop orders okay stop orders now stop orders are very very simple um you're in an uptrend but you missed out on the uptrend then you see a bull flag and you know the rules of bull flag is that it will break out and move to the upside but you'll be busy at work you won't have time to enter the trade even if the breakout happens all you need to do is to just set a buy stop order yeah so once price travels to this area and continues going up it activates your trade and you get into profit so for a sell stop order price is in a downtrend then you see a bear flag and you busy at work you can't monitor the charts all day to enter the trade what you do is you set a what a stop a, a, a sell stop order and price breaks out activate your sell stop and continue going down that's the concept between buy stop or, or stop and limit orders okay do you understand now um do you understand now at uh adequately do you understand now oh there are a lot of questions coming in a lot of questions coming in adequately do you understand now great okay uh leave it at close okay my moving averages are always at close okay Yeah, um, the commitment of traders is actually very, very, very private information, but it's everywhere online, okay? It's everywhere online. It's everywhere online. It determines where you're checking. Where well, you can check cftc.com or just type in cftc, cftc. Commitment of futures and traders commission in the US, so you get it right there. CFTC, just type CFTC on Google. You see how to find the commitment of traders report on there. The um so yeah, you need to input how you want to show your stop loss first. So if you put 50 pips, click on show stop loss, it starts trailing your stop loss. If price moves 50 pips away from your from your entry level, it shows to that 50 pips it has moved first to break even, then to 50 pips each every time till it tags you up. Okay, that's how to make use of the show stop loss button. Okay, so how can I use the Fibonacci retracement to determine support and resistance on the chart? Okay, first thing, Fibonacci is a tool in the financial markets. You can use it to determine where price is likely to reverse from, which is being support and resistance. But you can't determine that this is support and resistance from 
the Fibonacci tool. So let's take, for instance, uh, let's look at this area right here. So we had an impulse to the, the upside. That's impulse correction impulse, okay? How do I determine where price will stop? Very simple. I need to take my Fibonacci retracement tool. In an uptrend, I place it swing low to swing high. Swing low to swing high. Now, the Fibonacci have four different price area where everybody's looking at, which is the 50%. I don't look at the 38.2, okay? The 50%, the 61.8, and the 78.6, okay? These are the three levels I watch on the Fibonacci. Why? Because of it's a life level, okay? This values on Fibonacci is based on human life or transcript of human life, and humans will surely react to it. But the one I watch major is the 61.8 because that is where traders react from price. And look at right here, you see the this the 61.8, which was previous what resistance now acted as what support. So that is how you determine it's acting as support and resistance. Let's see another example before we, we ride on. Okay. So we're in a downtrend here. This is a swing guy, this is a swing low. Pick my Fibonacci from swing guy to swing low. And what do we have? We had price what to the zero, then impulse into the sixty one point eight, which was what previous what, which was previous what support right here, acted as support right here. So do you see how it works now? It acted as resistance support now resistance. Um, then comes down all the way to the minus 61.8, which was a potential target level using Fibonacci, okay? And that is how um, it's very, or it's easily done. Okay, that's how it's easily done on the charts, how to use Fibonacci retracement, that's how it's easily done. Um, I prefer risk to reward, okay? I prefer risk to reward. When I think in terms of pips, I'll think in terms that I'm not doing well. I don't even really prefer risk to reward. I prefer percentages, okay? I prefer percentage. If I tell somebody I made 1% of my trading account, the person will think I'm very, very dumb. But to be candid, my 1% is quite a lot compared to somebody else's 1%. So I think in terms of percentage and also risk to reward in trading, I don't think it's that but in, percent, in terms of pips. Because if I think in terms of pips, I will feel little doubt. Because I, sometimes I can set it for 20 pips. But when I use a good lot size, my 20 pips is better off than somebody's 20 pips. I hope you grab. So if you're on this webinar and you've asked me a lot of questions and also you will be funding your account after this webinar, you have the opportunity of winning a free t-shirt from me, like personally from me, okay? So I'll be opening this opportunity to three persons alone, okay? Three persons alone. You've asked me a lot of questions on this webinar. I know those that have asked me a lot of questions on this webinar. And if you're looking to fund your trading account after this webinar, just inbox me, okay? Inbox me after this webinar, and you get to win yourself the branded T-shirt from me, okay? Branded T-shirt from me, quite amazing. The pictures or the the, 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 the T-shirts are amazing. It has trade, eat, sleep, trade, repeat. It's very, very, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's very, very amazing. Okay, so shoots have answered your question. IODG have answered your question. So, Samuel, I've explained all the block already, but I'll do well to explain it again. Trading is based off probability. There's not too much probability, but you need to align yourself in the aspect of the right probability. <laughs> 25 percent bonus. That's that's that. I'll take that as bands. Okay, I'll take that as bands. Okay, bands, bands, bands. But you win a, a branded t shirt with 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 uh with um with 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 this trading stuff with you know it's not even <laughs> okay okay I will I will okay but, but let's just start with the t shirts okay you win yourself a branded t shirt if you if ask me a lot question on this webinar and also um we'll be looking to fund your trading account right after this webinar. The minimum amount to fund is 10,000 Naira, but you can do more than that, okay? You can do more than that, but the minimum amount to fund is 10,000 Naira to fund your trading account. That's a Naira account, but a dollar account, the minimum is $100, okay? So, 
yeah i'm still up for questions i'm still up for more questions okay okay so i'm still up for more questions Okay, okay, okay. Um, Silas, I would send you a message right now on WhatsApp. Okay, I send you a message right now on WhatsApp. Let me let me drop a message to you on WhatsApp. Okay, I send you a message on WhatsApp. Please check your WhatsApp. I send you a message on WhatsApp. Okay, check your WhatsApp. So, um, Silas, you've won yourself a branded T-shirt already. Um. We will we, we'll cook up something for those that have been funding and trading regularly, okay? Possibly on my next webinar. Um, I've explained all these tools. I've explained all these tools, but I'll do well to explain it again. And also, Samuel, I'll do well to explain all the blocks again. Then, it depends on the lot size you use, Peter. It depends on the lot size you use. If you use 0 0.01, 40 pips is $4. If you use... 0 0.10 40 pips is 40 dollar and if you use a standard lot 40 pips is 10 dollars okay sorry 40 pips is 400 400 okay Um, I can't I can't really tell you to look at pairs as a new trader, but if you're a new trader, um if you're a new trader, you should actually look to study ERUSD more, okay? ERUSD more. I prefer the cloud trade based on preference. I prefer the cloud trade, okay? Because I can deposit it too and make a lot from it. Okay. I prefer the cloud trade. For you to open a broker on MT4, you need to have a trading account with us, Francis. And I missed your call. You called me twice. I will do well to call you back. Okay. So, um, wow. Okay. Um, Peter, would you have answered your question? Then Silas, I mean, sorry, Samuel, let me explain all the blocks to you again. So I said in an in an uptrend, the previous bearish candle before a massive explosion of bullish candle to the upside is what we call a bullish order block. So look at it right here. This is a bearish candle before this explosion of this bullish candle. We expect price to come back into it. And what happened? Price came back into it and we imposed majorly away from that was a sniper entry right there. Looking at this also, this is a bearish candle. We came back into it, we imposed the way that sniper entry. I can't consider this as an order block because it's not down below here, okay? But I can consider this as an order block. Looking at this, what happened? Price came back into it, then we imposed little drawdown, then we imposed the way. Sometimes price won't even come close to the what? To the order block. This is an order block right here also. You see right here, price came into its position. This is an order block also right here. Price came into its position. So that's for an uptrend to do. Now for a downtrend is, let me, let me, let me figure out one for you. Okay, so this is a small uptrend right here. And we said the bullish candle in that uptrend is in the downtrend this is the bearish order block so right here we have 
bearish order block. Then the bearish order block. Right there, then this one also, the bearish order block. So you see how many times you could have entered this trade with sweet precision. With sweet precision every single time. You could have entered here also, but what happened? It failed. So that's the concept behind order blocks. Do you understand now at um who asked that question? Samuel, do you understand now? Yeah, I'm using it. No, we is it to deposit? Francis, please let's be more clear with your questions, okay? Um DXY, okay, DXY, Christian, DXY, the dollar index, okay. Always consider the dollar in the day. You can try as much as possible to consider the 10 year bonds futures yield, the five year bonds futures yield, or the 30 years future bond futures yield. Okay, that gives you another insight on where or when price will be heading to. Then you consider possibly um, the dollar index also itself. You consider the dollar index more itself. So, to the questions. Jeremiah, the minimum amount to fund your trading account with is 10,000 Naira. Okay, but you could do more than that. Or always do more than that. So you can have the opportunity to take more calculated risk can make more for the financial markets. Okay. Um, so Richard asked to explain the tools I like to use. I like to use the tools you see down below here. Yeah? So first, this is an horizontal ray tool. I just use it to mark out my order blocks or support and resistance. This is the vertical line to it. I use it to mark out sessions in the financial markets, like mark out the London session, the New York session, this type of stuff. This is the arrow. I use it to mark out where I might be expecting price to project to. This is the brush tool. I use it to write um, things on my chart. This is the trend line tool. I use it to mark out the trends on the chart. And this is the box tool. I use the box tool to mark out my my other blocks also for more precision. Then this is the the horizontal line tool where I used to mark out support and resistance also. So those are the tools I like to use majorly on the charts. Okay. Those are the tools I like to use majorly on the charts. So, um, some of I believe I've explained the question. So, Kelechi said, how important is the NFP to the USD pairs? To me, I believe NFP is overrated. That's to me, but it's very, very important. Always put it into consideration. Okay? Always put the NFP into consideration, but to me, I believe NFP is overrated. It took me, um, currently, this is my fourth year trading in the financial markets. I started trading since... I was quite young though. Um, but this is the fourth year trading the financial markets, and it took me two good years before I attained. It took me two good years before I attained mastery and consistency of my trading strategy. I don't know when will, will the bonus run for. Okay, but I think the bonus should be only for this webinar where you get to fund your account and win a branded t-shirt. Okay, to let everybody know you're a trader. Trade, eat, sleep, trade, repeat, eat, sleep, trade, or Trade, eat, sleep, repeat, and also half human, half boo, half beer. Okay, so Adekule asked, um, he wants to know the effect of timed order and if time my order expiry date, it will start right away. Okay, it will start right away when you place a pending order and it gets activated, it will start right away. Okay, Adekule, that's the answer to your question. Yes, it's a level in which price returns to without breaking through. Exactly. Our office is in Ikoyi, Lagos. Okay, Ikoyi, Lagos. But at the moment, we don't um, we don't offer training in house. Okay, we don't offer training in house because of coronavirus. I'm I'm not a trader on the copy trade platform. Okay, I'm not a trader on the copy trade platform. You can't follow my trades on the copy trader platform because I'm not a trader on the copy trade platform. 
Okay, so I have those questions are clear. And any further questions, please. Let's do what to ask questions. Okay, let's do what to ask questions. Let's do what to ask questions. Let's do what to ask questions. If we've got any question at all, let's do what to ask questions. Okay. Now, you should understand that um, support and resistance, supply and demand, or the blocks, they all have something related to one another. Okay, they all have something related to one another. That is the fact that they hold price. Okay, they hold price. Okay, they hold price. Price doesn't break through them. That's what they have in common. But the way they are applied, they have different approaches of being applied. Okay, they have different approaches of being applied, and that's the major thing about them. Okay, so are we clear on that? Okay, has anybody got further questions? I'm expecting Francis to ask more questions, okay? I'm expecting Christian to ask more questions. I'm expecting everybody on the call to ask more questions. Okay, so um, if there are no further questions, let's just analyze the chat and we call it a day, okay? I'm sharing my screen right now. So we'll be analyzing with everything we've learned together over time. So I want everybody to, in this scenario, I don't know anything on the charts, okay? I want everybody to, to, to teach me what to do. Okay, so this is USD JPY. What do we see? Okay, I want you guys to walk me through so I know that. Okay, um, I was told to analyze. Somebody said analyze USD CHF. Okay. Um, I already have an analysis on USDCHF. I'm actually expecting a sell back to one of these other blocks right here. But I will still analyze it also. So let's go. Um, okay, so we had a downtrend to the downside. So I can mark out the downtrend. We had a downtrend on USDC. Then after we had that downtrend, what happened? We had a breakout to the upside. So first thing first, I want to note is that we had an impulse, then a bump, then this. So I can say this is um, zero. This is the first wave of price, the second wave of price. This is the third wave of price. This is the fourth wave of price, and this is the fifth wave of price. Now, you notice on the third wave was the longest wave, and it's a rule the third wave needs to be the longest of the waves. Then we had a breakout right here. And if we look at this right here, this was a breakout and a retest, okay? A breakout and a retest before we pumped to the upside. And also if we zoom in clearly for a bigger picture, 
you can see we came back to this other block right here this bearish candle we came back there and which means it is valid so looking at this we now need to find where price traded inefficiently so price traded inefficiently also traded inefficiently here so i can look at this area as an area where price will trade back to before coming to this other block right there okay so what i expect on on usd chf is a sell to this area right here. then on the four hour time frame now see we had on four hour time frame if we take a trend line here yeah, Can see clearly that we had what the breakout now what i want to see is two things we have a what an order block here so i can mark the order block out and i won't rush and sell i won't sell yet i want to calculate half the value of the order block so i can calculate half the value of the other block from year to year the other block is 43, I'll be looking at 21.5 or 22. Okay, 23, let's just say 23. So I'm expecting price to go back around uh, this area right, before I look for a selling opportunity. So, and if it doesn't come, we move. That's just it. So, looking at this also, we have a breaker right here. So price might not come back here we can anticipate price to come back here. So I can draw this also right here. So the fact that the two of them are actually into one another, I can delete this and major on this one alone. So I'll be looking for selling opportunities on USDCJ. See how simple and easy it is. That's how you analyze a currency pair simple and straightforward now that is not a trade advice or a trade idea for you to sell usd chf it's just my own thoughts on usd chf okay taking usd chf as a trade is not a financial advice for me i'm not sure financial advisor do not take the trade okay so we've come to the end of our session uh, ask me anything session i'm sure you guys like were able to ask a lot of questions and get clarity to the things you feel are not really clear to you okay and the next ame session i'll be expecting a lot of questions from everybody um i look at the one year time span okay one year one year one year one year time span i go to the daily time frame and if I want to look at price, I look at from January 2020. I just need one year of data to determine where price is likely to go. One year of data. Okay. So I check January 2020, January 1st or January 2, 2020, down to current price action in time. So that's what I do. Okay. Francis is, is typing. I think he wants to ask a question. Okay, more persons are typing. I think everybody has got a question. Do we all understand everything that has been said on the webinar? Questions, people asked questions, you asked also. Did you gain clarity on it? And also, did you find value in it? Okay, somebody asked the question. Okay, I want you to drop your responses in the polls, okay? 
um i might not be talking about elliot wave okay i might not be talking about elliot wave and also some institutional methods So I dropped a poll. Please let's respond to it. How good was the webinar? Was it good or bad? Okay. Was it good or bad? The webinar. Was it good or bad? Okay, if you are amongst the two person that said you'll be funding your account after the webinar, um, just inbox me on WhatsApp. You have my WhatsApp number, just inbox me. Yeah, I mentor everybody, okay? I mentor everybody. You get mentored on the webinar and also you get mentored on the webinar. You come to my WhatsApp, you ask questions, I give you responses to your questions, okay? So I mentor all clients of EGM, okay? So um, that will be all for now on this webinar. And before you go, remember, if you can't trade, we have a product that works for you. That's copy trade, okay? Copy trade, you can copy traders and make a lot of money even without knowing how to trade at all. And also, if you want to learn how to trade, you can start learning how to trade and also copy traders and learn what and earn while you earn while you learn. Okay, so it's two ways. You don't get to lose. You get knowledge. You get funds. You get money. Okay, and that's how it should be. So, till we see you again on other webinars, that will be on that will be next week Tuesday, right? Next week Tuesday we'll meet again on a webinar. And yes, let me drop one more poll. So four persons said they will be funding. Okay, one more poll will be how often do you want us to do this kind of session? This type of session. How often? Is it more often? Or no need I'm a pro. Okay, so please let's respond to all the polls I've been dropping. Okay, so if you were part of the four persons that said you would contact me when you want to fund your account, let me drop my my, my WhatsApp number to you guys so you can reach out to me. So you can reach out to me if you want to fund your account and also take the, the, the gifts I've got on the ground. Okay, so I'll send it in the chat box. You want us to do it monthly, okay? Monthly, 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 monthly. Okay. We, 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 we think of implementing this monthly, like every day or every every last week of the month or so. But I'm glad, I'm glad everybody found the webinar and the session useful. And it's not about just coming on the webinar asking questions. It's about applying these things in your trading account, okay? applying these things, these concepts we've talked about in your trading accounts. So that's my number. You can reach out to me anytime at all. And also those that said they'll be funding the accounts and they asked questions also. Inbox me with proofs of payment that you funded your account or the, to request the bank details that you want to fund your trading account and send me the proof so I can um, Get ready to send out your gift, okay? And also possibly a personal Zoom session with you guys, okay? So once again, thank you for joining the webinar. We'll meet next week Tuesday again on another topic that will be mind-blowing and amazing as usual. So thank you very much. And do have, it's already the weekend, so do stay safe and have a blast, okay? Thank you.